Alrighty, you guys ready for 10.5. Angles related to a circle. So we're going to be able to find the measures of angles and arcs based on their relationships to one another. So this is something that we've known for a couple sections now, that the central angle and the intercepted arc are equal to each other. So if the central angle is 80 degrees, the arc is 80 degrees. If the arc is 80 degrees, then the central angle is 80 degrees. They are equal to each other. Any on angle, all right, an inscribed angle, or we call it an on angle, and a tangent chord angle. These are both angles that are on the circle. The vertex is on the circle. That's what we call an on angle. Those are half the measure of the intercepted arc. So if this is 100, the on angle is 50. This is 120, the on angle is 60. An in angle, chord chord angle, the vertex of the angle is in side the circle. So what we're going to do is we're going to have the arc plus the arc. And we're going to divide that by 2. So for this one we take 170 plus 70 and divide it by 2 and that would give us our angle. Now for the two tangents or two secants, the outside angles. The vertex is outside of the circle. So here I have two tangent angles. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the big arc minus the small arc and divide that by 2. So I take 260 minus 100 and I divide that by 2. So I get 160 divided by 2 which is 80 degrees. Now we're going to learn something later on about this arc and this angle. And I want you to think about that now. We'll come back to it another time. For the secant secant, two secants here, an outside vertex. The vertex is outside the circle. Same formula, 80 minus 20 over 2. So I get 60 divided by 2 is 30 degrees. And there's my angle. Oh, yeah. But do you think I'm always going to give you these two arcs and then, boom, you just get that one? I don't think so. Maybe I'll give you the angle and you'll be missing one of the arcs. <sighs> Sky's the limit, guys. Here's a quick summary of all of our formulas. We have our central angle that's equal to the intercepted arc. We know that. An on angle is half of the intercepted arc. An in angle, you add the two angles together and you divide it by two. That's the one that looks like this. And there's my center. The out angle, you have two options. Either it's the tangent, tangent, and that's the angle right there that we're looking for, or it could be secant, secant, with our angle there. And we take the big arc minus the small arc and divide it by two. The on angle can look two ways. Either something like this, where it's on the circle like that, or it could be one where we have a tangent and then we have the other one going across. So we'll be talking about this arc here divided by 2. All right, our first example using our new awesome super cool formulas. And what do you know? Just what I was talking about. I might not give you both the arcs and expect you to find this guy here. I could leave this as the unknown. Oh, man. Now this is an out angle. This is kind of a combination of a secant and a tangent, but the formula still works the same. I'm going to have 125, my bigger arc, minus z, which is my smaller arc, divided by 2, and that's going to equal my out angle, which is 32. And now I just need to solve it. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. I'm going to have 125 minus z equals 64. Then I'm going to subtract 125. Then I'm going to have negative z equals 61. So, oops, sorry, negative 61. So I'm just going to have z equals 61. Bada boom, bada bing. We're good to go. Not too bad, right? So what kind of angle do we have here? Well, my vertex is inside the circle, so I have an in angle. So we're going to use my in-angle formula. That's where I add the two arcs together, 
divide them by 2, and that would give me my in angle, because this angle and this angle will be the same thing. So basically averages the 2. So I have 65 plus, I don't know, AB, RKB, over 2 equals 54. So it would be the same steps. It's just the setup that's different on this one. Multiply by 2 on each side, and I end up with 65 plus x equals 108. Subtract 65, and I get x equals 43. So my arc is 43 degrees. Bada boom, bada bang. Oh, man. Looks like Mr. Allen is throwing a curveball at us this time. Woo! So we're going to have to do some thinking here. I want to figure out this angle here. And this is an on angle, and I need to know what this arc is in order to get this angle. Hmm, how can I figure out that arc? Well, I have this angle here. Could that help me out at all? And I also have this arc. Could this arc help me at all? I don't know. We'll see. Well, I know that if that's 40, I know that this arc will be 80 degrees, right? And if this arc's 120 and this is 80, that's 200. I only have this arc left over, so this has to be 160, right? 120 plus 80 plus 160 gives me 360 degrees. All right, I'm getting somewhere. Well, if this right here is 160 and this is an on angle, I know that my on angle is half this measure, so my answer is going to be 80 degrees. Yes. Oh, man. Another doozy. What is this? I only have one of the arcs that I need. I don't even get the angle or the other arc. This is ridiculous. How am I going to solve this problem? Oh, I bet you could probably figure it out. Hit pause if you know how to do it, of course. And then listen to the explanation. Otherwise, I'm going to hop right to it because I just can't help myself but do math problems all the time. All right, I get 115 here. I have 85 here. That means that I can figure out what this arc is, which is 160, right? Because I subtract both of these from 360. This is 200 added together. Take that from 360. I'm left over with 160. All right, well, this is an out angle. The out angle is equal to the, dis the difference of these two divided by 2. So I have 160 minus 85 over 2, and that's going to give me my answer, which is 37.5 degrees. There's my angle A. Yes. Yes. Oh, man. Quadrilateral inscribed in a circle. This looks like it's going to be fun, guys. I am excited. So I know that the measure of angle P is 60. I'm just going to write this down. You know, 60 degrees right there. Bada boom, bada bing. I know that PSR is 128, and I'm going to do that like so. And these can get a little messy, so it's nice to stay organized and even use different colors if you need to. Really up to you. Okay, I want to find basically the rest of the angles of this quadrilateral. Q, R, and S. All right. Well, if this right here is 128, this arc, my on angle, which is angle Q, this angle right here that intercepts the arc, is going to be half of 128. And I know half of 128 is 64. So I've already got one of them. Measure of angle Q equals 64. All right. Boom. Almost done. Angle R now and angle S are both needed. Well, check this out. If this is 128. What's this right here? Well, I'd take that 128, subtract it from 360, because I know that's 232, right? And the whole circle is 360. Divide that by 2, and I get 116. Huh. I just got the measure of angle S without even breaking a sweat. And then, what? A, quadrilateral, come on. We know that that's 360, right? So I'll just take each one of these. Subtract them from 360, and I'm left with 120 for angle R. Oh, yeah, I'm all done. Now, there are different ways of solving this problem. I've done it differently in the past as well. There are times where 
you know, I'll get, if this is 60, I know that this is 120, and then I can figure out what this arc is and do half of that to get this angle. You know, there's lots of different things that I can do. So if you solve this a different way, that's totally cool because there are multiple ways of doing this. One thing I want you guys to take note of right now are the angles that are opposite each other. What do you notice about them? That's something that we'll talk about in a couple sections here. So I'm going to just leave you there with a, a cliffhanger, so to speak, and let you ponder on the opposite angles of an inscribed quadrilateral. Ho, 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 ho. Here's your homework. Page 474, 2 to 12.